नमस्कार इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ दिल से वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सेवरल इश्यूज रिलेटिंग टू आर क्रिमिनल जूरिस प्रूडेंस एज वी ऑल नो दैट द कोड ऑफ क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर एंड द इंडियन पीनल कोड आर पार्ट ऑफ द कलोनियल लेगेसी दैट वी इनहेरिटेड एंड वी सीम टू बी परपेचुएटिंग इट एंड इट इज हैविंग डिजास्ट्रस कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस on the freedoms that we cherish under our constitution and i am going to uh, discuss this and have a conversation about these issues with two of the leading lawyers of our country perhaps uh, lawyers who are um, who have rendered and participated in path breaking judgments in this country on all aspects of the law uh, we have uh, mukul rohatgi uh, who has been additional solicitor general attorney general for india and uh, and in fact led many a battle for people of this country for the citizens of this country we have dr singhvi who uh, is again uh, some say a master uh, of of the way in which he argues in court he is a doctor incisive always on the point and of course uh, mukul is a doctor in a far more expansive sense he is doctored many a client and given them the appropriate medicine okay. uh, to get them relief so let's start the conversation by asking you this question are we perpetuating the colonial era and the colonial legacy by allowing the the same system of legal um, um, of, of of what is the code of criminal procedure to continue in the same fashion what are your views on it mukul you see there is no doubt that there is some perpetuation of the system because we are still following those laws and those laws were made at a time when the british ruled this country there are there were some good aspects and some bad aspects one thing which immediately comes to mind the good aspect namely that a statement made to a police officer is not admissible in evidence because they did not trust the native police and therefore they made this provision but the colonial legacy as you just mentioned uh, while ago that you have what is called a police remand so somebody is is in the control of the police in a police station or in a police headquarter or a room whatever uh, under control of the police what he has to say he doesn't say you know all that all that goes on and uh, what we need is to tune our criminal laws in accord with the basic freedoms of the constitution mm-hmm. namely article 14 19 freedom of speech freedom to move around freedom to live freedom to work <coughs> and right to liberty life etc unfortunately they have not been so attuned and i have not as yet seen the new new act which has come it's much worse mm-hmm. sorry so my, my my view is that there should be a task force which should look at these laws on the touchstone of these three four provisions of the constitution and only then will be able to come out of let me ask system. you a follow up question before i go to dr yes. singhvi see our law says that i can arrest a police officer can arrest a person on suspicion now suspicion is a subjective thing so you have drastic laws like uapa you have drastic laws like pmla and you can arrest a person on suspicion and nobody can challenge it this very process of arresting somebody on suspicion without fully investigating the matter so again is a very dangerous yes thing. so i come back to this if you look at those laws in the light of the constitutional freedoms you need to tweak those laws yeah. you tweak it in the light of the constitution that you don't give the power of arrest to a junior police officer who will lock you up and tomorrow if it is found that there is no real grounds in our courts there is no there is no compensation for vexatious arrests they well i thought he was guilty i have arrested that's it in the matter so you must tune it in that and even if you have some drastic powers because of terrorism and stuff like that give it not merely to a senior police officer that by itself hasn't worked you know you have yes, yes, it yes. has worked yeah. so you must have some checks 
that it must go through two or three levels of senior officers who should on the file order that yes, not one but two or three have seen uh, the basic facts and we feel that an arrest is made out. Unless it's a case of somebody committing a crime, committing a crime in your uh, that's different. Uh, that's in, different. before yeah. your eyes, like somebody committing a murder. Right. But if you have these things and you have those checks, again you look at the trust of the constitution. Maybe we can come on. Uh, Kapil, actually, you raised a very important question, and I think uh, it is far more than mere you know changes. I think a it either needs fundamental legislative restructuring. And along with that, I think it needs a complete change of mindset of the judiciary also. Both have contributed to a de degradation and decay of the criminal system, qua the constitutional values we are talking about. We've got these grand articles 21, 20, etc. in the constitution. Now, what's the reality? Let me give you a very telling example. Uh, take bail. Now, bail in the most serious of offenses everywhere in the world, you get bail. Leave aside a few categories of terrorism or child molestation, etc. You get bail. The classic and the only test for bail is that A, you have a presumption of innocence. And the presumption of innocence can be only effectuated by giving you bail, but putting you on conditions. And it is what we call the famous triple test. You will not interfere with witnesses. You will cooperate. You will not free, uh, flee. And there is no flight risk. But that is actually in practice, and I am now talking of the judiciary, turn on its head by adding a fourth test, which has no place according to me if you marry the principle of uh, presumption of innocence and freedom. That is, that yes, they do flight risk, they will also cooperate, they will be in peace, but the gravity of the offence. I have for long believed that I must argue a matter where this gravity of the offence must be investigated. What is the question of gravity of offence? You are not convicting me. You are not trying me. You are giving some subjective view of a gravity of the offence. The whole point of bail is that till you convict or acquit me on the gravity of the offence, you give me bail. So the point I am making is assume all the three tests are in my favour. I have roots, I can't flee, I am going to come every day to the police station. Still, bail is denied regularly on gravity. It's the norm. So, this is turning the jurisprudence of bail on its head. Second example, this fact of creating more and more laws with skewed and special provisions for bail. I mean, Section 45 and all this of the PMLA or the UAPA is only some example. Point is, these provisions, and this is where I fault the judiciary, have to be consistently interpreted by the apex court to give us clear direction and momentum. What happens is today, this judge interprets it in the right way. But then there is some inconsistency. I speak in a different voice. So there is chaos. These provisions have to be interpreted very strictly. Many of them actually have to be interpreted on the constitutional anvil. And I would say the best example is Nikesh Tarachan Shah very, very minutely examined the constitutional validity of that 45 provision of the PMLA, which is draconian and said it's not constitutional in many ways. But yet our own courts have then held it differently. The point is, if you lean in favor of freedom, then, and otherwise you can't do it, then you have to have legislative inter intervention. That I don't think will happen easily. So, at least uh, within the interstices, you can interpret it correctly. I was, I was going to come to bail a little uh, later. Can we just add one thing, yes. sir? He mentioned about gravity, cooperation. Now, I have a serious problem with the phrase cooperation. If I am an accused, I have a right of silence. That right is under the constitution. Nobody can force me to speak. What do you mean by cooperation? Does cooperation... Cooperation means you must say what the police wants you to well, say. Well, <laughs> does it mean that I admit the offence? <laughs> what else is cooperation? Right. See, I can understand cooperation in a case where somebody is accused of murder. Murder weapon is not found. So you say, yeah, tell us where the weapon is. So under section 27, it will lead to the discovery of the weapon. Right. That is admissible, not a statement. I can right. understand. Right. But in any other economic offence, so-called, you first say that we turn the innocence on its head by saying that we will believe that you are not innocent. Right. That's the first thing. That's, right. That's the first error right. in these laws. The second is cooperation. Every judge writes like a mantra. You will cooperate, you will not tamper with the witnesses. Tamper, yes. But when you say you will cooperate, what does it no, mean? No, it is worse, Mukul. There, is, there are judgments which say cooperation does not mean confession. Cooperation does not mean you will say what you will say. Then but that judgment mean? comes... And then there is a dissonant voice after a short what while. What does it mean? Every I, judge says cooperation. 
So it no, has to be it, consistently it, applied. That's right. I mean, we're talking about bail provisions. Actually, I was wanting to yeah. take the conversation back to prior to bail, right. the custody by the police. Right. I think bail comes later, yes. custody comes first. Yeah. So what are the parameters for custody is the question I started with. You went on to bail, but we'll yeah. deal with that a yes. little later. Yes. Yeah. So what are our thoughts on that? It's very important. We have stopped for many decades making a distinction, Kapil, between power of arrest and need for arrest. This is a fundamental fallacy. I have a power of arrest. I equate it to the need for arrest. Today, according to me, forget the fact that you are filling up your uh, jails with unnecessary uh, occupants. Forget the fact that you are doing it politically motivated in many cases. Forget the way that you are harassing. The fact of the matter is that I would say more than 90% of arrests would not be justified if you made the difference between the need for arrest and the power of arrest. Correct. All the so arrests, what do you need to do to justify that need for arrest is the question. See, there are two things. Yes. Ideally, there should be a filter by legislation. You can say you will first record these. It will then go that stage. When two people that's have recorded, then you can arrest. That's what that I'm is saying. one. Yeah. But that's never going to happen. Unfortunately, it is not easily going to happen. Whoever is in power, you tend to go with the power. It is for the courts to start reading it like that. And But again, there, consistently five Supreme Court judgments, the same line, then the law will be laid down. You have to say, that, what is the point of arrest? You are arresting people, Kapil, in most cases we are all doing, after two years, after three years. Anything you wanted to collect is there. Papers have been collected, raids have been done. St statements have been yeah, recorded. What is the need for arrest? But you are also arresting people without any evidence at all. That's the that's other category. That's a far more serious issue. Because now if you target individuals who you are politically against yeah. and you arrest them without any evidence and then no bail is granted because there is a suspicion that they have committed the crime, where do we go from there? And if you add 120B, which is what is conspiracy, you, you know, he's ridiculous. not directly involved in any offense. You will say 120B, conspiracy. Now you can't prove conspiracy. There is no basis for proving conspiracy, but you will keep him behind bars. So the issue is, how do you formulate a legal framework within which an arrest must take place? The hierarchy of officers is not going to make a difference. And I agree with you. We, we need a framework through which arrest can only happen if prima facie it is established that I have committed the offense. Well, unless unless you're able to show that to the magistrate, there should be no arrest. I think that's very important. So the power should be taken away from the echelons of the police. Yes. And vested in a magistrate right. who we still trust because he's... And who, where the pre evidence will be produced. And some evidence will be produced. Used. He will have some satisfaction. Yes. And he may give you the green light. Yes. And he will show it to us. That evidence must mm. prima facie be given to us. Okay, this is the basis on which I find but, prima facie is that you are guilty. But that again, what you are saying is very important, but that will have to be legislated. I agree. I mean, now, I'm just saying. The problem is, I don't know when that will happen. Meanwhile, existing, if the court was to hammer this point every day in the existing law, that you must show a difference between your need to arrest and power to arrest, and we are going to examine it. You'll find a sea change. Unfortunately, courts are not applying that test. We they are can't. saying arrest is done. One more thing, Kapil. 41A was brought in with this kind of concept in mind, that there is some filter. People people listening to you won't know what 41A oh, is. So there is a section 41A <laughs> yeah. in the Code of Criminal Procedure, yeah. where the police can give a notice, ask you to appear, and you then interact with the police. And then an arrest may or may not happen. So there is some kind of a filter, some kind of an exercise at least, rather than somebody arresting somebody on mere suspicion. But it's not followed. No? So, the so the problem That's is, the problem. there is a direct judgment to the Supreme Court on 41A. We call it the Bible. It's called Arnesh Kumar. That's correct. But whatever Kumar it is, it's never been yes, followed. Yes, yes. In rare cases, I come across orders where it has been followed. In rare cases, we come across courts holding the arrest to be illegal. If there are 100 arrests in India today, Probably one may be held to be illegal on certain facts, but it is kind of given. So probably, I mean, I would tend to agree with you. Take away that power from the echelons of the police and vest it in right, somebody. Right. And if you don't want to vest it in, let's let's say the magistrate, because you know every day they are also overworked. You can think of a body like the CVC. The, the Vigilance Commission is generally a good body. People don't, you know, make allegations against this. 
सो गिव इट दैट काइंड ऑफ अ पावर दैट काइंड ऑफ अ लेवल ऑफ अ पर्सन एंड यू कैन ग्रेड इट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट एन ऑफेंस ऑफ सेवन ईयर्स अरेस्ट इन अ सेवन ईयर ऑफेंस और अ टेन ईयर और फिफ्टीन ईयर यू कैन ग्रेड इट एंड देन गिव दैट पावर टू दोज काइंड ऑफ सम वॉट न्यूट्रल अथॉरिटीज कैन से लुक एट द फाइल एंड से वर आई फील इट्स ओके आई डोंट फील इट्स ओके मे बी दैट वुड बी अ फिल्टर यू नो द प्रॉब्लम इज द फॉलोइंग if you assume if the police officer assumes that you are or suspects that you have committed the offense and there are no parameters at all there is no way to actually test that article 21 says you life and liberty protect life and liberty and arrest a man in accordance with procedure established by law what is that law suspicion it is inconsistent with 21 itself how do you correlate suspicion with article 21 and let's face it this is a huge reservoir of power which yeah. is abused which yeah. you are giving to police officers daily abused and we also must understand and it's no criticism to say that the manpower which is there in a western country from where we pick up some of these laws and the manpower working under such pressures and conditions here is totally different it's so easy to abuse that power here you and the checks and control in other jurisdictions there. i would say kapil put it down on paper yes the moment you put it yes. down on paper yes. there is something to test it with exactly even if it is five lines i agree seven you. lines 10 exactly. lines exactly and somebody looking at it correct say well you are not on an unruly horse he has done something there is some material yes or no under the present law when a police officer arrests you on suspicion he can keep you in his personal custody that is what is called police custody for 14 days now under some special statutes and under the new framework of the nyay sanhita you can be kept in police custody up to 90 days now that's much worse than the colonial era now that means a man or a, anybody arrested will never get bail for 90 days because the investigation is going on so we are moving to a much worse regime than we inherited from the colonial era is so i think the supreme court must should be cognizant of these things so kabil i would say that what we call remand to the police or police remand is premised on the sanction of the magistrate right so you have to be produced within 24 hours of arrest before a magistrate under the mandate of the constitution the magistrate has to authorize remand whether it's up to 14 days or any any number of days he has to authorize right so he has to apply his mind so yes should it be done should it not be done? unfortunately i would say that maybe in one out of probably 50000 cases a magistrate would say that not even one day remand is necessary right. i have not come across uh, never you would never very get very, very rarely yes, you come across a case the last case which comes to mind was mrs gandhi's case right. where the magistrate said that there is no material to remand right. and she was released some 40 years ago so it is law does provide for a check but that check has become ineffective because the remands have become uh, routine mechanical yes <laughs> a magistrate does pass an order but you know he is doing lip service no, say no. well they say that we have to do this we have to examine he has to cooperate he has to tell us this that okay so remand oh, we have seen the court case diary case and diary. on the yeah. basis and case of diary, that, yeah. case diary case diary something which the accused can't see That's correct. that is another uh, so uh, what is the solution the solu- you have a law being passed like that right. instead of a law liberalizing it which is yeah. a retrograde law yeah. so the only way out is i mean we are talking of legislation to improve yes here you have a <laughs> legislation <laughs> in the other direction yes. the only way would be the courts have to be robust to exactly. strike it down right. this will have to be hit by some 21 some yeah, 20 yeah but but you look at but, it this uh, way look at your pmla talk of bail uh, and read the provision for viewers you will not get bail unless the public prosecutor has been given an opportunity to oppose the application for the release and when the public prosecutor opposes the application the court is satisfied that there are reasonable grounds for believing that he is not guilty not of the offense now you tell me to. the accused doesn't know what's against him i am arrested on suspicion i am produced before the magistrate i have no material with me how do i convince the magistrate that i am not guilty or how does the magistrate come to the conclusion that i am guilty couple on the bare text this is an impossible provision struck, should it have is, been struck down no it was struck it down was i know the tragedy I know, is, but but it should be struck down again no but but, but, but the whole story doesn't end there it, on its text this is an impossible standard to satisfy yes. it was rightly struck down in a very well reasoned judgment Justice by an outstanding Narimans. jurist yes but 
the amendment is very interesting by which they're supposed to have restored it. According to me, those three words added I do know. not at all restore it. What happens? After that, in the period after a judgment called Nikesh Tarachan Shah for your viewers, which struck it down, and till the amendment came, or even after that, even after the amendment, most of the high courts took a robust view. They said, this does not mean that I must find him not guilty by a certification now. It cannot mean that. Therefore, we'll take broadly the same view. Then along came the judgment of the Supreme Court, which we are now trying to review. And therefore, that judgment really put the seal on what a robust view the high courts were See, taking, my, despite my, all this. My fundamental objection to all this is, all this is contrary to our basic freedoms. And why should the court tolerate such legislative measures which destroys the very fundamentals of, our, uh, of the rights given to us under the Constitution. Now, if you look at the PMLA now, and the viewers will understand, you have a 420 offence which is cheating mm -hmm. under the Penal Code. Now, if it is put in the schedule of the PMLA, it is 420 again. Under ordinary law, you will entitle to bail. If it's under PMLA, no bail. you will have to show that you're not guilty 45. of the offence. I mean, what kind of law is this? And why is the Supreme Court not looking at these laws? That's the next question I have. These kind of laws and these kind of prosecutions are irreversible yeah. unless you hear the matter immediately. This matter of PMLA has been pending now for months. In fact, I was very sorry you and I were in that matter. The reconsideration of the main controlling judgment in PMLA, which we believe, and I'm openly saying that, we don't believe it's right at all. Vijay Madanlal Chaudhary judgment. One full day you argued, one full day I argued. I'm ashamed to say that every attempt was made by the government to make sure the matter is not heard. Now that is the review. That Without that obstacle being clear, I'm not saying that you have to win it or you have to lose it. It should be referred for reference. The issue is this matter should have been heard much earlier. Right. What are your views on it, Mukul? No, see... Cases which involve liberty of hundreds and thousands yeah. obviously should get a priority yeah. and they should be heard. And uh, according to me, not only this case, but there are several other cases. I mean, let's put it this way. To every individual, his case is important. Yeah. To every individual, you know, he, he, he has his case to be heard. We have unfortunately, we are into a big clog. You know, there's a clog of cases. There's... The, the <clears throat> courts are full of cases. Mostly corporate uh, no, matters relating I, I, to my corporate feeling, disputes. My feeling is that unless we drastically amend the system of hearing of cases in courts, this problem will remain. I mean, you may aggravate it or you may bring it now, down. What do you mean by amend the system? Let me sort of ask so you What that I mean is that the whole system is cool. Well, what is that? I mean, what, what? The, Let's the, come to specific. Yes, yes. Let's start with the Supreme Court. Yeah. The Supreme Court was formed in 1950 to hear a particular class of cases involving the Constitution or very, very important questions of law, of liberty, of uh, freedom of press, of uh, things like that. The Supreme Court itself, after 20 or 30 years, I would say, or after 20 odd years, it forgot. The Supreme Court has forgotten why it was established. It has today become nothing and nothing more than a regular court of appeal. Every day we do hundreds of cases in yeah. the Supreme Court. They are mundane cases. They should never have gone even to the High Court, much less the Supreme Court. Every bail goes to the Supreme Court. Every injunction goes to the Supreme Court. Unless you set that house in order. So you first set the Supreme Court in order. But you must have, uh, you must revisit. The court must revisit what it was meant to do and what it is doing. That will then percolate to the High Court. The High Court will say what it is supposed to do. Unless you do all that. But I am on another question. You're right. I yeah. mean, you're talking about large structural change. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm on yeah. another issue. There are cases which are of seminal importance where the liberties of our people, right? Those cases are not being heard for years, right? There are other matters that are being heard in priority. The question is, who decides the priority? Should the priority not be decided in the context of the damage it is causing to, to people whose freedoms are being taken away? Now, that should get priority, no? 
That is not and in the hands of the system. That's in the hands of, of judges themselves. And the best example of what you're saying is your recent judgment of electoral bonds. Yes. What happens is that the system ultimately reaches the matter and possibly gives the right result as it gave, gave the electoral bonds. But the damage is done completely. Exactly. A former chief justice has repeatedly in my presence said that we'll hear it next week, next month. That next month, next week in 2019 became 2024. That's so, the, pr the problem is that the PMLA, for example, if after, say, six months, one year, some of these provisions are declared to be unconstitutional, then what happens? Then what happens? For example, well, all the benefit of the electoral Abhishek, bond was gorged. You mentioned gorged. electoral bonds. I would still like to add, yes, it is important. It is more important for political people. An individual who is looking for yeah, bail or his, yeah, yeah. his, no, his, I agree. I his agree. roti or makan, you yeah. don't bother about electoral bonds. Yes. Both of you are politicians, so it's important. But from no, no, no I, we didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, anyway, <laughs> I, that's my thought. But I, as a pure practitioner of the law, what is more important by far it's PM, is affecting it's, liberty of hundreds uh, of people. This is what my Undoubtedly. Is, yes. I mean, I would rather say this should be heard. Yes. I don't give a damn about electoral bonds, whether 5,000 to BJP no, or no, not. It, uh, the general public is not concerned. No, no, no. General, uh, we'll leave that out. Ah, right. That's, uh, that's yeah. controversial. No, my but, point is different. but freedoms are yeah. far more Far more than, important yes, than all of them. My point is others. different yes. that the time taken to give the right verdict, the benefit of the wrong yes. is already absorbed. Yes. That's yes. the point. I that's the point. point. Electoral yeah, I agree with liberty. you. But then Whatever damage has to be done is done. But then it's happening everywhere. A small individual, he gets acquitted after eight years. He has served the sentence. He has served That's everything. That's another sad Us, part. Usko dekho, uska kya ho I agree with that. But you have should to decide these larger issues of law which will affect not individual people. Therefore, the whole PMLA, batch of cases. according to me, is the prime case which should be heard at the earliest for these kind of provisions and as to whether it has been lightly passed as a law or not, which hits at the root. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it should be heard according to me by five judges so that it settles the law. Five senior most judges should sit and settle me, the law. Kapil, the judgment which was delivered, which is the bane of all these problems by a three judge bench, that's the procedure was wrong by saying, I will decide on the validity, but I will not decide whether it was rightly born under a, under the money bill or That's not. Correct. You cannot separate. If you find you have upheld the law, people are in jail. They can't get bail for five years, correct. four years. After three years, suppose it is held that it was wrongly passed by parliament. It could not have been done. Correct. How will everything else be undone? Absolutely. You can't leave that challenge separately. That should have been the first decision. Absolutely. Rather than three straight away, five or seven judges. Is this law born correctly? But assuming you're right, this court can easily hear the matter yes. on, on the issue of money bill. Yes. It has been pending for long. Why shouldn't it hear it? That should have priority, especially in the yes. context of freedom. According to me, that should be heard first. Yes. And then we show a question. review of the judgment. These are very important things. I think they realize it, but this is not happening because the threshold question will affect so many sectors. Not and only it will be irreversible. You know, after a while, it'll be irreversible. Yeah. Now, the next big issue I want to discuss with you, and we have had a fascinating discussion, uh -huh. is about conspiracy, 120B. Now, in every offense where you do not have direct evidence against an individual, you add 120B. Now, that man will never get bail. There are no, there is no proof of conspiracy till the end of the trial. Now, what happens to that category of cases and those kind of those accused who are involved in the 120B? Is should 120B be used in this fashion under a See, criminal? That's the point. First of all, it has been around, but the misuse and the use in which it is done now was not being done earlier. That's the tragedy. Even with similar provisions, you are really misusing it now. Number two, in every case, I am finding an argument which is completely used not to be raised earlier. That 120B is a standalone. 120B, the tail will wag the dog. It will stand alone. Now, there is fortunately, and these are the kind of things which are required, judgment which says that you cannot have a 120B alone under, for example, the PMLA. It's a very robust judgment. But even today, as of yesterday or day before, the argument is still continuing. It is justified. It is not, auto there are any number of cases I am doing where 120B as a standalone is justified. After a judgment, there has to be also, I think, somewhere a sense of responsibility by the people who still propound an individual case that look, 
This is now covered. They should go. You forget PMLA. 120B uh, used in every even in every other to case get, also to get involved, to get people in, uh, as accused who they want. I am only. I I believe. I really hope that judgments like this are also made in the other non-PMLA category, and they are consistent. My fear is always that you make the right thing, and then somebody changes the law in another judgment shortly. Again, in, in 120B, there should be some legal parameters on the basis of which you can involve somebody in gun conspiracy. What are your thoughts on that? No, my thoughts are on your last uh, comment. Ah. See, one thing is to lament that the court is doing this, court is not doing it. That, yeah. That's one issue. Yes. I mean, there's no point of lamenting beyond a point. You have to bring a structural change in 120B. Yes. It's a 150-year-old law. Correct. It is being used or misused or whatever. Just as we were discussing that the power of arrestor's custody should be with a body apart from the police. Some structural change should be brought in that exactly. provision because it's a, it's a all encompass encompassing provision. Exactly. Right, one twenty B conspiracy, small conspiracy, big conspiracy, larger conspiracy. Correct. All these things are developed. Exactly. So you put in something in one twenty B, and if the legislature doesn't do it, the court should step in yes. to say that the rigors of 120B will be tested on this, this, These this. parameters. Ke bhai, some, some prima facie material that you got from them. Correct. In some form or the other. Correct. And the classic test is a Privy Council test where some people robbed a bank. One guy was waiting in the car, the, the getaway car, getaway, getaway car. <laughs> he argued that look, I didn't do the robbery, I was only driving a car. So they said, no, you were a part of the scheme and you were looking ke police na jai, and therefore you will be a part of conspiracy because you were in the scheme. But the cases you were talking about, nobody, this man doesn't know what is going on exactly, there. Exactly, exactly. So unless there is some structuring, it was said by Privy Council 100 years ago. So you structure that through the court. It won't happen through parliament. Structure it through the court. Take out their Privy Council judgment. Put your own imprimatur in whichever manner you want into it. Mukul, I have seen cases that someone has speech in Mumbai mein, and some violence took place in Delhi. They will say, but he was the linchpin, the man who gave the speech in Mumbai and he'll be involved in conspiracy. Well, I've seen this happening and people are in jail for three years, four years for this kind of stuff. But this is a very serious issue. And the problem then, and the last issue before we, before we close this uh, wonderful discussion, is that why does the trial court never grant bail to anybody? <laughs> now, this is a very serious issue. As a matter of course, no magistrate will grant bail. In the rare case, maybe. No, I'll tell you, Kapil, you this is a very seen. serious issue. Our experience shows that when we started practice, the High Court used to write a five line order and grant bail. The hearing would last five to ten minutes. Yes, sir. As things progressed, these laws became more complicated. And unfortunately, the Supreme Court, which was supposed to be the beacon, beacon of uh, these freedoms, despite saying bail is the rule, not jail, etc. The Supreme Court, I am sorry to say, has become small-minded. A large number of bail orders are today interfered with, yes. which was never the, the job of the Supreme Court even 25 years That's ago. That's correct. Every second bail order is interfered with, a grant of bail is stayed by the court. That's correct. That you remain in jail. Yeah. Normally, if you have bail, it can never be stayed. Absolutely. You can cancel it in egregious Absolutely. cases, but Absolutely. you never stay. Absolutely. But since that is now happening in a mundane fashion, routine fashion, you know, that also filters down. That's right. I mean, High Court judges also say, well, if we grant bail, next day it is stayed, comments are made, why have you granted bail? So it filters down, there bail not be bail, there will cancel, we will not give it. Remarks are made, are so, so, see, the, the mindset of the magistrate is, we will not give it, you take the High Court. Now, this is the mindset of High Court. High Court says, we will not give it, you take the Supreme Court. So, this is the same filter. Hota hai. It's a strange amalgam, Kapil. I think there is also a feeling being generated. Agar isne bail di hai, to some good dal me kala hai. Ah, yeah, that's wo, the other dal me kala theory goes there to the high court and says, hum apne upar kyon le, let the Supreme Court. That is one part. There is another part. For special categories, and this uh, is, I think, important in practical terms. For special categories, you have special judges. Now, it's okay. Special judges is valid. You must have special judges. You must fast track certain categories. But why should you have the same human being as special judge for years? 
you know whether it because is MP, special mpla mp mla court special human no, being by mp mla court <laughs> you certainly have but we are now finding a chain where trial judges are lasting yes. two years yeah. there's no problem we are nobody is asking for a particular judge you rotate the judges every three months high court judges in that category are lasting two or three years the net result is a chain of command is made straight away yes. where the result is uh, virtually you know known no, because you know very, the particular i am not saying anything bona fide or not yes. but it could yes, be bona fide yes. but my predilection even bona fide makes a consistency of negativity right up to the supreme court yes, sir aap ne mindset ki baat kari you know till recently or even now people used to say ke bhai bureaucracy ka mindset kaisa hai kagzi karwai karte jao decision mat lo correct और ऊपर लिख दो सबमिटेड प्लीज करेक्ट तो फिर ऊपर गया उसने कुछ लिखा फिर उसने कहा सबमिटेड प्लीज करेक्ट तो इस तरह जो चल रहा है वो ही यहाँ आ गया है सबमिटेड प्लीज आप वहां चले जाओ वो कह रहा है आप वहां चले जाओ और ऊपर माइंडसेट अगर वो वैसा नहीं है तो यू नो दिस इज एक्चुअली ऑल दैट आई कैन से टिप ऑफ दर्ग देर आर सो मेनी वेरी सीरियस इशूज दैट बी डेवल the functioning of the criminal justice system but thank you very much for being here because uh, this this Thanks will i hope i hope people who listen to this uh, understand because we are here not for any personal issues we are, we are here for the larger interests of the country in the context of the freedoms that we cherish and i hope that we are going to meet in future and have some thank in depth you. discussion on many of these issues thank you very, so thank very much. much thank you sir thank you very much Thank you.